Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in my Tudor revision series. This video is going to focus on the foreign policy of Henry VII. So firstly the aims of Henry VII's foreign policy. Firstly it was to secure the throne. He had a very weak claim to the English crown and so securing that was very important and as he faced a lot of opposition in the first 10 to 15 years this was extremely important. Secondly was marriage alliances, which is sort of an extension of securing the throne, as he needed to secure the Tudor dynasty from his point onwards. So marriage alliances for his children, so Prince Arthur and Henry and Margaret, etc., was extremely important. And finally to avoid war, as this was expensive and usually a waste of time. So Brittany, I like to think of it as basically an extension of France during Henry VII's reign. He, as you know, he was spent 14 years in exile in France, but in Brittany, so he had very strong relations there. And in 1488, Henry decided to fight with Brittany against the French invasion, but they were ultimately defeated. And by 1491, the leader of Brittany, Duchess Anne, married King Charles of France. And so from that point onwards, Brittany was basically France. So now focusing on France, England had France had for a long time been traditional enemies, but they had crucially supported Henry's claim to the English throne at the Battle of Bosworth. In 1488, France invaded Brittany, which was a threat to England because Brittany is quite close to England and so it would be a launch pad to invade England and also disrupt England's trade. Henry then decided to invade France, but France was more focused on Italy. So after nine days of invading France, the Treaty of Etaples was negotiated and signed, and this decided that France would no longer aid any English rebels and pretenders, and there'd also be a £5,000 annual pension, which made up 5% of the royal income, so this was very important. Now Spain at this point was made up of a marriage alliance between Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile. In 1489, the Treaty of Medina del Campo meant that Spain would no longer aid English rebels, they would be stronger trading partners and be allies against France, and also Arthur would marry Catherine of Aragon. Then in 1496, uh, England was invited to join the Holy League, so this shows that England was getting a bit more respected and involved in Europe. And then in 1501, Arthur and Catherine married, but Arthur died in 1502, so this was very short-lived, and Catherine was kept in England sort of like a prisoner, until Henry could marry her. Um, ultimately, Spain allied with France after Isabella of Castile died, so England was sidelined, and this is quite a common theme throughout the Tudors of England just being ignored. Burgundy was ruled by Margaret, who happened to be Richard III's sister, and this meant that she consistently supported Yorkist opposition in England, as seen by Simnel, Warbeck and Suffolk. Wool trade was vital to both England and Burgundy, so Henry VII responded to her support of Yorkists by introducing a trade embargo in 1493, but this severely damaged both economies, and so in 1496 the Intercursus Magnus was signed, which secured their trade and also ended aid to Perkin Warbeck. Finally, in 1506, the Treaty of Windsor allowed Suffolk to be returned to England as he was the last Yorkist real claim to the throne, and it also further supported trade. So Scotland was ruled by several Jameses. In 1488, James III was assassinated, so in came James IV, who was extremely hostile to England, and he wanted the old alliance back with France. So in 1496, he, la he launched a four-day border raid into England and some Cornish rebellions, but ultimately this all failed. So in 1497, the Treaty of Ayton was signed, which stated that Scotland wouldn't attack England, but could still be allied with France. And in 1503, James IV married Henry's daughter Margaret as a, another way of securing peace between Scotland. 